Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready? The champ is here! It's just a man! Oh. Give me a hell yeah! What the rock yeah. is cooking? To be the man, you have to be the man! Big bubble pop! And you hook up! Coffee in the big day. Whoa, what was that? Kualanga. Hey, mi gente. Mi gente. Hey, folks. <laughs> we are back again. The triple threat back with you here tonight here on Working the Marks. We got a lot to talk about. A lot of stuff that happened this week. Pretty amazing. You can thank me for that flute intro at the beginning a la Ron Burgundy. But uh, really nice. great to be back with everybody here tonight. D, wonderful to see you. I see a certain uh, guy that we're going to be talking a lot about later on in your background. And we're joined by the macho man himself, Macho Rodriguez, on the road. Look at this guy. Mi what gente. A t- Mi gente. Mr. Mi gente himself. <laughs> All right. From the yeah, Muscle man. Wrestling Podcast. This is amazing, D, isn't it? This guy, he's at work and he still makes time to be on work in the marks here. Our guy on the street, our guy out in the field, tracking down the hot wrestling stories. He's tracking down the scoops and all the flavors. All the scoops. That's but exactly before we go I'm any further, before we go any further here on this show, I just want to say that this is not the only show where people fear for their lives. Yes. There are other shows, <laughs> there are other, other companies where people absolutely fear for their lives. Okay. Scared. Very scared. And I'm sitting down right yeah. now, and I'm not going to take six minutes to tell you why I'm fearing for my life, but I'm going to take a lot longer to talk about professional wrestling and the weekend that we had Ooh. with the action that we had across the board and also the excitement and the controversies backstage. So uh, certainly a lot to digest. Oh, D, there we go. Where do you want? Oh, my God. There he is. We saw the light. Hey. <laughs> D, where you want to start off, brother? Let's start there's, off there's a with lot to uh, talk about. Let's start off with a uh, Tyrus, aka Brodus Clay, retires from wrestling, not wow. just from Who? the NWA. Who? Brodus you talk about Funkasaurus? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't. Funkasaurus. The, the first dinosaur. The first. <laughs> the first dinosaur. <laughs> not the, the boogie woogie down one. There we go. That that's a dream match right there, right? Funkasaurus versus oh, man. Yeah, uh, Luchasaurus. Oh, oh too bad he retired move. before we could watch it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah AEW definitely. would have picked him up real quick. You know, they like giving away money. Well, I don't know yeah. about that. Some I think some of his beliefs uh kind of uh, conflict with AEW and the like, image that be, they're like trying being to being real. It's real is subjective, David. We all know that. Um, you, you don't like taking <laughs> bullshit backstage. He likes real companies. Well, with, I think it's his political the hierarchy. Beliefs. When you got a guy who's featured on Fox News all the time, I don't know if they want to have that on AEW and oh, everything true, that it entails. True, true, true. Whereas, whereas with the NWA, it. it's different. I, I remember to make sure that it was it was D and it wasn't Umberto over there. Umberto? No, it's not Umberto. It's not Umberto. Yeah, he yeah. does get mistaken for him quite a lot, though. I look like him. Oh. I look like him. Well, you got so more we, hair so. than he does. That's cool. Oh, wow. that is Ooh, cool. The, the cold blooded, coming. cold blooded, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so Tyrus is retired. Um, I think he lost a career match against EC3 for the NWA Championship, the 10 no. pounds of gold. And um, the stipulation in the match is that if he loses, his career is over. So he lost. His career is over. And uh, is, that, is, obviously, that just for, is that just for NWA or that's for everything? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess you'd assume it's it's everything. I mean, the guy's been wrestling for a little while. Um, you know, he's got a pretty good gig going for himself on TV as, you know, political punditry is concerned. And, yeah. hey, man, all the I power to it. him, man. You know, he did his thing, man. Uh, went out on his back. Now EC3 is the champion, uh, the NWA champion. When, when did you ever think he would say that, right? EC3, yeah. NWA champion. You know, I mean, never, honestly, never, never because life. NWA has produced some of the greatest charismatic wrestlers ever, and this guy is anti-charisma. Uh, charisma, so, I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty strange. Well, Billy Usually Corgan, the NWA champion. Billy Corgan yeah. can bring the good stuff out of you. 
Well, you know yeah. what? I mean, Smashing Pumpkins was the shit back in the day. So let's hope, let's hope that's true. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I actually had a chance to meet Billy back in the day at an ECW Ooh. show at Hammerstein. Corgan or Body? Uh, Billy Corgan. Wow. Okay. Billy Corgan, yeah. Um, he was actually kind of hiding out in the crowd. And I remember seeing him with a Chicago Cubs hat. And I was there with my cousin Bernie. And I go, yo, I think that's, I, I think that's the dude from, 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 uh, from the Smashing Pumpkins. And he's like, it looks like him. And I was just like, yeah, let me go up to him. And I went up to him and I'm like, are you Billy Corgan? And he's like, yeah. Oh, he and I was just like, oh, <laughs> what's up, <laughs> man? Hang <laughs> <And> one for <laughs> me. <laughs> hey, yeah. listen, listen here, man. Hand to whoever you praise. But I can tell you from personal experience, Pat somehow figures out a way to run into celebrities. One time we were yeah. at Sea Caucus at, at Mill Creek Mall, and Pat ran into a, a dude from N MTV. What was that little bald guy's name? Do you remember? Matt Penfield? Oh, lost... Matt yeah, Penfield. Matt Penfield. Yeah, I remember Yo, that. Pat met Matt. <laughs> dude, Matt yeah. Penfield, I, I met in Sea Caucus at Mill Creek Mall. Brenda Blackman from UPN 9 News. <laughs> what? Okay. I mean, <laughs> only the finest. Richard Bay from the Richard Bay Holy Show. Holy Remember the shit. Richard Bay Show? Um... Well, off the saw, wall. well, I saw The Rock when The Rock went to Mill Creek Mall. What was he, he cooking? Said, uh, were we? Did we? Did we really? We were there together. I think we did. Were me, you, and Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we all walked out there together, man. And it was funny because he said, "Finally, The Rock comes back to Sea Caucus." Like, we've never <laughs> been to Sea Caucus, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, who the hell goes to Sea Caucus on purpose? But um, <laughs> but even the people from there will say that, okay? Um, hey, it's better yeah. than going to it's better than going to McDonald's to go meet Ken Shamrock and Al Snow. Remember that? That was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, that McDonald's. Was awesome. What McDonald's was that at? Thirty uh, Second Street, the one up on Kennedy Boulevard. They used to have all the old, uh, old autograph signings back there. Really, on Thirty yeah, Second Street? That was so awesome, yeah. dude. That was like one of the best things that they used to do. Like, I don't understand why they stopped doing it. I guess because you know they want to monetize it, but. I thought it was great, man. I mean, people met so many wrestlers there, so many wrestlers that way. The oh, Rock shit. was even there at one point. All what these was he guys cooking? Double cheeseburgers? Double cheeseburger, quintuple <laughs> cheeseburgers. He, he put two double cheeseburgers on top of each other. Yeah. <laughs> Don't quote me on this, but allegedly The Rock's the one that came up with the McDouble. He's the one that said, you don't need two pieces of cheese, jabroni. Yeah, yeah. That, what? That, 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 that might be... Uh, <laughs> That might be an an urban legend. It might be an ur a rural legend. That's, uh, that's why I said allegedly. I just want to make sure that uh, we don't get sued or nothing, you know? Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, that's if we don't get sued for the fucking theme song. But, yeah, <laughs> the theme song is enough. So so moving on, D, what other news did we have out of the wrestling world well, this week besides well, our, our main event topic? Well, Carlito has been signed by the WWE, but creative still has nothing for him. <laughs> Yeah, you can't, you can't make this up, dude. You can't make this up. They didn't have anything for him years ago. They re-signed him, and they still don't have nothing for him. I think he should That's take wild. over the LWO. Beat up Rey Mysterio. Yeah, take over the LWO. Absolutely, yeah. he definitely. He, he's a perfect heel. I mean, yep. yeah, he's going to get the initial pop from being a babyface and being gone for what ten years, but yeah. he'll come in and he'll he'll fall right into that heel category and, right and, away. And, and you guys will appreciate this. Wouldn't you rather have a Puerto Rican run an NWO than a Mexican? Well, the, I yeah. mean, yeah, I mean, but you also got to realize that there's a Filipino wearing a Puerto Rican shirt every week. So, I mean, isn't Joaquin Who? Wild Filipino? Who is he? Joaquin Wild? Is he? Oh, yeah, what a, he, what? Yeah, some bullshit! You can't be no honorary well, really, NWO. Because, oh, yeah, Owen Hart was a part of the Nation of Domination. He was white. He was Canadian. Yeah, but Owen, Hart, Owen Hart spoke. I mean, Owen Hart spoke fucking you know street. Does this guy speak Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> Owen he was, Hart was hood. He had street he was, cred. He was from the mean streets <laughs> yeah. of fucking no, of Canada, bro. Come on, mean streets of Calgary, yeah, Alberta, Canada, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it's it's a bad neighborhood to walk down. You don't want to mess with that fucking area. They got bears under the stairs. That is yeah, true. That is true. He is from Western Canada, so yeah. That I, I last can see thing that. you want, I've heard. I heard from my co-host that the last thing you want is to get attacked by a moose out there. He's Ooh. currently in Canada. Oh, wow. he's, hunting, he's hunting moose. Yeah, he's he's from he's from uh, Toronto's area, like New Brunton, uh, Canada. So isn't that, isn't that what Edge and them are from? Family. I don't know. Is Edge from Toronto? Or Christian? Not or, or fucking uh, what's his name? Fucking uh. Mr. A.W. himself, Jericho? 
No, he's from Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Who's from yeah, Toronto? Yeah, him, him and Kenny Omega are from the same place. Oh, yeah. Jesus. No wonder Roddy Piper, too. Roddy Piper's from Winnipeg. Piper's a Canuck? That's right. Yeah. I always put Piper Ooh. in my top five Canadian wrestlers list. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Christian's number one. No. He had in mind. Where's no, your father? Edge is, it's yeah. heard Edge. You heard, Edge you heard him great. on that fucking thing? What did he say? Where's your father? Or how's your father? Yeah, where's your father? Yeah. <laughs> You got to give it to Christian, though. The, the the way that he's been able to reinvent himself, the way he's been able to find these these great ways to get heel heat, you know, the bro, man, you, turtle you neck, got, everything you else. To, you have to be one of the peeps. I'm a peep, bro. Yeah. Got, I'm down with the peeps. Yeah, yeah. We we were Absolutely. huge fans of Edge and Christian growing up, man. I mean, they were they were the shit. Oh, yeah. You know, their matches with the Hardy Boys were fantastic. Did he, did he not say when they asked him about where's where's uh where's Edge? He's like, I don't. Oh, did he say I don't know him or I don't speak for him or he, something like that? His exact words were, I only answer questions about myself. And then he paused because he's a heel. And then he said, and Luchasaurus. And he said, I don't have any friends. My only friends are Luchasaurus. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, so. speaking of uh, speaking of Christian and speaking of uh, Luchasaurus, we should maybe segue into All Out. And, and our guy on the road, right. our guy on the street, watched the show this week. Um, and he and I obviously did different. not. No, uh, I, the- I, I denounce AEW. He denounced AEW. His heart will go on. He's sticking with his boo, CM Punk. Um, but, Mach, what what were three things that stuck out to you from uh, All Out this weekend in Chicago? Uh, number one, I want to say is that this show was all about the future crop. It was all about them putting their foot down and saying, we're going to make the future of the company right now, tonight, and – you know, you, whether you're either going to get on board or not, and you could tell that it was all about making uh, Miro the next big guy on Saturday night based on his storyline. They followed one. up with a storyline that he's been pushing for a year, which is that he doesn't know if he has a wife. He doesn't know anything like the whole, like, well, I'm sure we'll get into it. Stop uh, it. Orange Cassidy Stop came it. off absolutely the best, I thought. Um, obviously. You mean the guy, who, the guy who fake kicks you? Yeah, I mean, oh, he geez. tried to do that to Mox, and he na- he nailed him with an elbow real bad. It was it was pretty snug. Uh, you could tell Moxley wasn't about that life, and uh, it was definitely about uh, pushing guys like Shane Taylor, getting exactly. him out there, getting his name out there. He was the guy who who worked Samoa Joe. He's from Ring of Honor. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter who he is. Well, then why'd you ask who's that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was my rock impression. That was one of the great. Oh, okay. You know, oh. Rock. oh, okay. But yeah, you look, I you look just like him. About that. I tried. Yeah, I, I identify oh, yeah, as the rock. Looked, yeah. Um, the second thing I noticed was that the AEW World Championship is not the most important title on the brand. What? It is wow. definitely the international championship. It was said multiple times on the show. Tony Khan said it himself. What? Really? That this is the most inter- important title uh, on the brand, and so I MJ, that was MJF is in the MJF is in garbage land now. I suppose he is. I mean, I think they're trying to push this story and this narrative so much with Adam Cole that they've forgotten that he's the world champion. Hey, baby. And and the third thing that really stuck out to me, and I and I really I'm really curious to hear Patrick's take on this because uh, this is the goat talking was. The way Ricky Starks worked, it wasn't just that he worked Brian. It was the fact that Brian just released without even being asked this question that because he wasn't 100% fully ready, Ricky Starks led their match. Mm-hmm. He said he just kind of followed his, his, uh, everything that he wanted, and he, he made it very clear. Like A lot of people don't like to work Brian because he works a little tight. He works a little stiff, but he said mm-hmm. every time he nailed Ricky, Ricky just ro- rose to the occasion. And he just, he looked like a star. He absolutely looked that way. And if that's the way the company's going, then. Can you say that with a straight face? I did. I did. I I thought about it as I said it. I was like, oh man, that, that definitely came off as weird. But (laughs) yeah. So those are the three things that stuck out to me. Um, uh, If, if I, if I want to throw like, you know, one in there, I just think that Tony Khan doesn't know how to book women, Mm -hmm. but to be clear with that, I'm pretty sure he's having the same flack that Eric Bischoff had in late WCW. No, I believe that it is TBS that doesn't see the women in AEW as marketable. So he has too so much masculinity energy. So they only want one energy. match on a card. No, I think they 
the current crop that is in AEW, they don't see as marketable. I don't think it's about women's wrestling. Mm-hmm. I think they're not happy with the stars they have, which is why I think they're looking to bring in Mercedes Monet. Does he fear? Does he fear funny. for his life from Britt Baker? Probably. I mean, she probably told him like, "Hey, you're due for some fillings," Ooh. and you know, yeah, doctors yeah. in. I, yeah. I, I could see it happening at the dentist's office. Uh, let, let's kind of dissect some of your points here, uh, Maj. Um, obviously, the women's wrestling hasn't been all that great in AEW recently. Do you think any of the downturn in the women's uh, division has anything to do with Jade Cargill no longer being the centerpiece of the women's ooh, division? Ooh, ooh. So I, I agree. I think that that's a really great point. I think that she was like, she was their Bianca Belair, and I don't mean to make this comparison because right. of who they identify as. But what I'm saying is, she like she just like she gave off that star vibe. We right. knew when Jade was out there that she was an absolute star, and I think little by little they were giving us information like, hey, she's working in the ring with Brian Danielson. He's really uh, helping her character. He's helping her in ring work. And I think that has a lot to do with it. I also think that something that hurt AEW, which I don't think they intended, was the way Britt Baker came off on All Access. I think she she was the right. face of the division, and she comes off as kind of like a uh, uh, very toxic. And that's yeah, the best cool. way to put it. I mean, most people went into AEW All Access thinking like, oh, here we go, Sammy Guevara, this kid's like a little douche. And they came out thinking like, oh, no, he's just trying to – be something like this kid's like he's he's a nice kid you know yeah yeah, he's had issues with andrade and eddie kingston but he squashed them both you know he's trying to make himself and uh he definitely said some things that i think caught him some heat on there but getting back to uh brit baker there is this one specific episode where tony shivani tells her you know you have to let this thing go with thunder rosa and she's she at like a child like a child dressed as an adult as an adult just said i can't i just can't let it go bring her to the e Bring Thunder Rosa to the E. I, I think Thunder oh. Rosa is going to end up staying in, in AEW. I think also Thunder Rosa has some aspirations for maybe doing some MMA fights. We don't know. But I do think, without a shadow of a doubt, that the division was better and women's wrestling was featured better when Jade Cargill was the champion. Uh, to your point, you know Bianca Belair is obviously a lot further along in the process. I think she's a better worker at this point in time compared to Jade Cargill. But Jade Cargill, yep. you really don't need to do a lot to sell her. Her appearance is enough. She's gorgeous. Mm. She can oh, yeah. talk. She's impressive physically. Oh, yeah. You know, she's in the vein of a Rhea Ripley. I think that would be a dream match. You know, Jade and Rhea, Absolutely. I think they would tear the house down. Uh, and I think the thing that sticks out to me about Jade is Jade's about, oh, there's the back again. He's he's doing the back thing, the Raquel back pose again. Uh, <laughs> but but I, I think the thing that sticks out to me the most about Jade is jade's desire to want to learn jade Mm -hmm. uh sitting under the learning tree of a cm punk a brian danielson a william regal you know listening to what these guys are saying finding different ways to improve and to become a better performer and i think that that is going to get her very very far in the business bring her to bobby lashley's group well i she would be awesome in bobby lashley's group she would be awesome in wwe and i think that if she wants to take her career to the next level that's the destination for her um I think her the way she lost was just so underwhelming. And no offense to Chris Statlander, she's a good worker in her own right. Who? But it was it, it was super underwhelming. Chris Statlander. Um, I just yeah. I just I just think that they definitely could use somebody like Mercedes Monet. It's rumored that she's going to be appearing at Grand Slam, which is coming Ooh. up in a couple of weeks. Who knows money, what will happen money, between money, now money. and then? Yeah, yeah, money. You know, and, and and again, more importantly, you need a star really for that division. You need somebody to carry that. Obviously, you have a match already built there between her and Soraya. There's a lot of history there. I think that would be pretty, uh, pretty think good for them. Neck? Absolutely, man. She's a pro, dude. Come on. That, that's not even a question. Did uh, she the one that fucked up her neck? No. No, man. No, man. I, I don't Yo, think Monet that's what was. Monet was the one that fucked up her neck. I, I, I don't know. Do you have a source or something? Like, I don't know. I'm just Who's saying. Who's I remember. I remember. I remember. Uh, Soraya. Mercedes Monet messed up fucking uh, oh, Paige's neck. Oh. There was a spot, but Soraya has gone on record multiple times that it was just a cla- it was just an honest mistake in the ring. Yeah, okay, that's what they say. I don't. I, I Pat Pat has kind of alluded to this. What I feel like has been like two months now, right, Pat? Where Soraya has never been fully healthy. Yeah, and I think that this, this one like small shot. It doesn't even look that bad when you watch the video. Bro, I even think Conan just even Conan, pretty bad. Even Conan and Disco said that in all in all in all in. 
you could see that they were protecting Soraya through the whole match. Yeah. 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 Okay. They had to. They had to. They had to. And, and and look, man, I mean, they wanted to give her the shot in the arm. She had a great moment in Wembley. She deserved that. She never really got her WrestleMania moment, her quote unquote WrestleMania moment. I think it was great for her. It was her house. I, it's her house, obviously. She comes out to Queen. I mean, you know, it's it, it was cool, man. And good for her. And you know what? She deserves it, man, because of what she's meant to women's wrestling. Absolutely. Uh, what, move- she did, what she did to women's wrestling, bro. Well, I mean, she was kind of a catalyst into where where do we where we got women's wrestling to now. She played made- her part. You know, her, AJ Lee, you AJ know, her Lee leading AJ Lee. AJ and then- Lee did it all. Well, AJ we can't played talk about Soraya without we can't talk about yeah. Soraya without talking about Emma. Because yeah. that match in NXT for the inaugural NXT women's Championship. That's a classic, bro. Yo, but she was super over with that gimmick, man. Not for nothing. She was super over with that gimmick. Look at that look he's giving. I think, I think Macho's driving that's, through mountains. That that's the no, look no, no, you deserve. Okay. For, that's the look you deserve. You froze on a dirty look, and that was the look that D deserved. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. What I was gonna, what what I was gonna say was the first match that was given. House down. I recommend anybody go back and watch that match. It is. Yeah. The, it's no, a, Emma, was, Emma was great match. in NXT when she went that to was. The, when she went up to the main roster. She sucked balls. Yeah, it didn't work out. I mean, look, sometimes these things happen in the business, man. But at no, the end literally, of the day, she's in the back sucking balls. Well, we, I don't know about that. I don't know about any said <laughs> balls. I'm healing sucking. it up today, guys. Healing you it are, up. You are healing it. Yeah, you, you're certainly healing wow. it up. Uh, Just call me Disco. We're going to call you DJF, all right? DJF. Right. Look, DJF. Look at the face. Look at the look face. At it. See, on. Macho's face says it all right there. You know, you froze <laughs> on another on another dirty look that he deserved. But, um, <laughs> but, but moving along... Um, you know, the Ricky Starks, Brian Danielson match, uh, that was a match that kind of interested me. Um, I still wasn't very particularly sold on the card. Anytime you get to see Brian Danielson wrestle is a great, great time. Uh, I'm a huge fan, obviously, as American you know, Dragon. as well as you are. Been following his career yeah. since the beginning. Um, and Ricky Starks, man, he seems like a guy that the veterans really like. And I think he has the right kind of attitude. Uh, the fact that he worked with Punk. Who, doesn't, he you know, look like, doesn't he look like fucking... Uh, well, what's his name, bro? Fucking uh, the heart kid. John Leguizamo. He no, look, yeah, he does look like John Leguizamo. Wow. No, but, but he, no, he lost. He looks like he looks like fucking uh, what's his name, bro? The bad heart, the black heart. Owen. Teddy oh, no, Hart. No. Teddy, Teddy Hart. Hart? He, looks like, he looks like Teddy Hart, man, to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about I, it. Just take another look at him. I think you got to get your prescription checked out, D. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Teddy Hart. Where did you come up with that I one? Don't know. I don't know. It was like Teddy Hart, man, to me. I, I could see John Leguizamo, and for some reason, he kind of reminds me of Harry Connick Jr. in Independence Day. I don't know why. <laughs> He's got some of those characteristics. But but the okay. kid's a good promo. He's a solid worker. And, again, he's a guy that, that you could see that the veterans take to. You know, you look at the yeah. people that he's worked with, Chris Jericho, CM Punk. He worked extensively with CM Punk. And, you know, as we found out, you know, later on, CM Punk didn't really always get along with the younger wrestlers, let's say. But this is a guy that Punk took under his wing. Punk helped him. Danielson's now helping him. I mean, dude, what, <laughs> what other seal of approval does he need for people to realize that this guy is a star in but the do you making? Think, do you think that Audible was good? I think that Audible was excellent, man. I mean, plus, you know, you got to think about the fact that you got rid of the Chicago guy in Chicago. What other guy can you bring in that's got that kind of credibility, that zest? You already got Samoa Joe on the card, Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson's going to pop a crowd anywhere he goes. But it was more than that because Brian actually told us, which I didn't know. Pat, you might know this because you're more of a historian in terms of who works where. But Brian Mm -hmm. actually told us that that was the first time he'd ever wrestled at the United Center. So not only did they get Brian Danielson, but it was the first time that crowd had actually seen him in a wrestling match. So it was the perfect like ad lib. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think they they typically would have their shows at the Rosemont Horizon, which is where they had uh, Money in the Bank, where they had WrestleMania. You know, that's typically where WWE has a lot of their shows. Uh, I forgot. I think I, I think it's called the All State Arena now, if I'm not mistaken. Um, mm. But yeah, that's that's a very interesting little side they note. And the Punk's house. They, they should. I mean, we'll see what happens come November. But, you know, uh, Ricky Stark certainly is a guy who's making a lot of headlines. To me, he's one of the he's one of the undercover MVPs along with uh, Swerve Strickland. I think those two guys yeah. are fantastic. I think that those are two guys that should be in line for pushes. And I really hope that that Tony Khan recognizes this and makes the most Where is of these Keith two guys Lee? that he has. Where is Keith Lee? 
that's a probably that's a great arguing question with the back. Yeah, mm. yeah. I'm I'm shocked. I'm honestly shocked that Keith Lee, uh, that Keith Lee's like hasn't come back. I'm shocked that they Doesn't haven't. He have done a heart, more does he have a heart him. condition too? He does have a heart condition, but I mean, as far as I know, they didn't really have anything for him creatively, and they went through a lot of changes. He went Carlitoed him, bro. Yeah, he well, but yeah, but I mean, like Keith Lee is a guy that like you look at, and he should have been a lot bigger than what he is. I mean, especially you think about like when he had his main roster moment. Oh yeah, you know? definitely. You know, he had a hit a moment with Brock Lesnar in the Rumble. He was in a Survivor Series match with Roman Reigns. Like they they were really endorsing this guy big time. Something happened along the way. Unfortunately, said, he had his said, health they, issues. They said Vince don't like brothers that have a high vocabulary level. I don't I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that, but. <laughs> I, I think I think at the end of the day, he was given opportunities. Unfortunately, they didn't really work out in his favor. And he's a guy that I look at. And I think to myself, man, they, sh they should have just done a lot more with this guy. Um, but what um, what three things, what three negatives stuck out to you uh, as far as All Out was concerned? And before we get to that, I just want to ask you, which show did you think was better? All In in Wembley Stadium or All Out in Chicago? All Out. All, all out, out felt like Ooh. all out felt like a pro wrestling show. It felt like when I was watching it, I was like, "Yeah, I can see Bruce Prichard and Kevin Dunn. I could see them like actually producing this show. This was produced well. It felt like everybody rose to the occasion they needed to. And I don't know if Brian had something to do with that. Maybe he did, but we don't know. But um, I I felt like all in. I, I don't want to steal his phrase, so uh, please don't sue me. But it felt indie rific. It felt like one of those shows, like, the best way I could describe All In is it was like sitting in your mom's uh, living room watching the King of the Indies. That's what yeah. that felt like to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely, definitely. Um, what were three negative aspects of this show to you? So my three negatives about the show, obviously, were the way – the way the card is structured, I really feel like he makes a mistake in how he structures the card, whoever he is. You know, obviously Tony Khan says he's in charge of entirely the whole thing when it, when, uh, when it comes to storytelling and creative. So then I guess we're going to lay the blame on him. The right. structures of the matches make zero sense to me. Uh, uh, the only thing that he seems to ever get right is the opening match. And... In terms of this week, the opening match was actually one of the weaker matches. One of the negatives that stuck out to me is the Young Bucks and their inability to be professional. I get that they're trying to, get for, they're trying to go for heat, and they're in Chicago, and they're trying to play up the booze, and they're slowly turning heel. But I feel like right now what the fans needed is for you to be the EVPs. Go out there and just put on a pro wrestling match, and they, they chose their feelings over the match. And the match suffered. It was like a it was a spot fest clusterfuck. It's the best wow. way I could put it on there. How many yeah, super kicks I, were in that match? Oh, I didn't even count. But I can tell you that that uh, there was a there was two spots where they did uh, the finish for the FTR, where it was one young buck, one FTR member, and then they did the double super kick with one young young one young one young buck and one FTR member. Uh, that was the second negative that I saw, and honestly, I. I don't want to keep harping on this, but it really feels like companies kind of ran out. They booked themselves into a corner with MJF. They don't know how to book them now. That's what it feels like to me. I think they're using this tag title thing, and it's really hurting the rest of the roster because some of those Ring of Honor talents that are just jobbing to them, like Aussie Open, that's a solid team that Will Ospreay has worked his ass off to make a thing in Japan. And they come over here, and they're just fed to MJF and Adam Cole, and it feels, it doesn't feel like it's the right decision. It doesn't feel and indie-rific? No, it, it feels like poor booking. Like, you can have, like, team, people can lose, and it not hurt you. Ricky right. Starks lost. Orange Cassidy lost. It didn't hurt either one of them. They rose. They're going to mm -hmm. be bigger stars after these losses. Wardlow beat CM Punk. It didn't hurt CM Punk. And it made Wardlow the biggest star in that company until they decided they didn't want to build Goldberg. And, yeah, uh, those are the three things that really stuck out to me as negatives. I, I don't know. I mean, so what, what do you think? What do you think about the things I said there? Well, there's certainly a lot to digest. I think you bring up a lot of good points. Uh, I think the fact that MJF is your world champion and you're not featuring him more prominently 
now you have the international title main event that show when you should have had the AEW title main event that show. And you're basically telling your audience literally and you're demonstrating to them that the international title is more important because it's on a guy like John Moxley now. Um, I think that they're going to struggle now, now that they don't have CM Punk. They're mm. going to scramble around and figure out a lot of things. John Moxley is a good hand, but do I think that John Moxley is going to be the guy to bring in those ratings? I don't think so. I really, Patrick, really if don't you think so. Like, this, this, he works, if he works the style he works this week, that he worked this weekend, I believe he can. This but if just he goes in, back Pat. to the Matt Cardona style, mm-hmm. I don't I don't believe that it's going to yeah. work, no. Do we, do we have breaking news we here? We have breaking dude? news here, Pat. On 9-2, Collision's ratings was at 0.11, which is 345 thousand smacking people watching the show i'm not i'm not surprised though dude because a big selling point for collision was for cm punk and now you're not going to have this guy in that show anymore they're going to have to rebrand it um i i, I can, agree with you i just we we are we, we are going to point out on here that payback was on at the same exact time right that is a valid point and there were college football games too which are equally as important to to their respective yeah, demographics so um Notre Dame two and oh yeah. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, AEW, they're, they're going to be on a rough road. They're going to have to mm-hmm. improvise a lot. John Moxley has the talent. Yes. John Moxley could be that guy. But do I think that he's intriguing enough as a character? Are we suddenly going to see something from John Moxley that we haven't seen before that's going to lure in uh, a, an extra 300,000 or 400,000 people? No. I think the people that like AEW like AEW because that's their hardcore base. That's their niche. It's been around long enough where people now know what to expect from the program outside of their big show, which is probably going to be Grand Slam. You know, the only surprise I could see coming up soon is Mercedes Monet showing up. What that turns out to be, we don't know. Uh, It'll be a nice boost in the arm for them in terms of attention. But again, I just think that their problems backstage, the stuff that goes on backstage is more interesting than the shit that's happening in the ring. And that's a big, big problem. And I think that Tony Khan needs to improve the structure of the company, needs to have uh, certain people in positions that belong in those positions, whether it's booking, uh, whatever the discipline committee is. Um, and he, ne- he needs to act more professional. He needs to stop trying to be their friend. He needs to stop trying to be this guy that's just booking a show, but he wants to party with the wrestlers afterwards. You need to be a fucking professional, okay? Mm -hmm. You need to go out there and you need to be their boss. Whether CM Punk's firing is the beginning of that, we don't know. Uh, But 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 it certainly we'll see over time. Uh, What was your match of the night? Well, I mean, up until I had three matches that stuck out to me as like the best, and if I would put them in order, I would say. Miro and Powerhouse Hobbs surprised the shit out of me. It was not, it was not what I'd expect from those two. I know Miro's a good worker. I've seen yeah. it, but I had no idea this was Powerhouse Hobbs. No clue, Pat, at right. all. Uh, the second match I would say is Brian Ricky, and I'm not trying to be, you know, a, a homer here because of how how we feel about Brian. But I really felt like the storytelling, I felt like the, the shots in it, and I knew what we were going to get from the two. And I know that Brian knew he had to fix something. He had to, he had to have people talking about what's on the show instead of what's behind the scenes. Right. And, right. and as much as I, I know a lot of people disagree with, uh, Orange Cassidy, John Moxley was the best match of the night. Storytelling all around. It really felt like, uh, yeah, it really felt like a like a genuine. It felt like it was produced by WWE. That's the best way to put it. Wow, wow, that's that that's did not feel a like an AEW match. No, really? Pat, I, I recommend go go watch this match. I think you'll come out with the same feelings. That that feels like an outlier. I've never seen a match produced by anybody not named Kenny Omega, Brian Danielson. Mm-hmm. Hangman Adam Page. I've not seen a match by any of anybody not those three people in that company. That was that good. I was like, yeah. wow, this might be the best version of AEW we're ever going to get. Well, in fairness, I will say this much. Uh, for a very long time, I have been saying on this show that Orange Cassidy is one of the best wrestlers in the world. And that's a fact, folks. The gimmick might not be for you, right? You might not personally like it. It might be difficult for some people to get. But every time that guy steps in the ring, he delivers, no matter what they're asking him to do. 
He has Absolutely. great technical ability. Okay. The guy can work, dude. He comes from a good background, trained at Shikara. He's not a slouch, dude. This guy is not a slouch in the ring. He might look like a freaking DJ. Okay. He might look like a guy, a guy that hangs out at your local bar. He might look like somebody you, you smoke weed with behind a venue. Yeah. But the guy steps in that ring and brings it every single time. And I'm honestly not surprised. I am honestly not surprised. Um, what do you what do you really look uh what, what what do you forecast for AEW in the coming months? And what do you think they need to do better in order to get them back to being a, a more respectable wrestling company? The number and, one company. Well, they're not they're never gonna be the number one company. Let's let's no. just get that out of the way. And even Brian Danielson mentioned that, uh, which Tony Khan said that he is their challenger brand. So whatever you want to call it, that's fine. It's a secondary promotion. That's what it is. It's an alternative for, for fans. And that's fine. Yeah. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? It's good that it exists. It's employing wrestlers. And it's something else for somebody else to, to, to take in. Um, but what, what, do you, what do you forecast for AEW in the coming months? And what do you think they need to do better to maybe perhaps get some of that respect and credibility back and kind of eliminate some of the black stains that they've gotten over the subsequent months? First things first, I think they need to produce better product on screen and get people talking about what we're watching on our television on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 and Saturday nights from 8 to 10. I think that is the priority. And right now, and I say this so often, I say it on, on my show and I say it on TikTok, I can't have faith in Tony Khan because we care as a fan base, a wrestling fan base, we care more about the shit that happens behind the scenes in AEW. Like, look, CM Punk is gone for nine months. Nobody's talking about the product on screen. We're talking about where's CM Punk. That's a problem. Tell them when me, people care more about the guy, you know, that, that's not there. And uh, I think, honestly, I think what they need to do is they need to fix their situation with the world title. If you want to run this whole, like, uh, grudge match between MJF and Adam Cole, then you need to run it. But it's not doing the title any favors. I would definitely push guys like... Orange Cassidy and Ricky Starks to the top, like have them, I would immediately jump those two in some kind of, some kind of program, make them fight each other for a chance at the world title. Maybe even have a triple threat match. That way, one of these guys to take a loss. If you really need to protect MJF, H however you feel, obviously MJF is the biggest name in the company. So you want to protect him, but I definitely feel like that's an issue. And uh, unfortunately, until the new contract, is signed with TBS and Turner Broadcast, I don't think a lot of changes are going to come because I think right now they're kind of handcuffed and they have to run business the way they have it now. And uh, uh, I guess the last point I would make is I would definitely have a sit-down with the EVPs and let them know, like, you guys need to be leaders now. The way you're going out there, you look like children making victory laps around a ring. Mijante, spot Mijante, do you think they're going to lose? do you think they're going to lose their TV contract now? Well, that's a, that's a big one. I mean, I think there's a lot of talk about their app, so I wouldn't be surprised if they did lose their TV contract, but most definitely I believe they're going to lose Friday nights. I 100% believe Friday nights will be canceled. What's on Friday nights? I only know Wednesdays and Saturdays. What's Friday? Rampage. Rampage. Oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I You know what? I think that they are going to get a TV deal. I think they're still going to stay there. And I think even though they're not doing great compared to WWE, I think they're bringing in a demographic, a steady rating, albeit a low rating, mm -hmm. and they're satisfying whatever the requirements are that are given to them from Time Warner Discovery. So, you know, I think as long as they continue to do that, but focus more on the Orange Cassidy's, focus more on the Ricky Starks, MJF, Adam Cole, um, and Swerve Strickland. Have more of that. You know what I'm saying? And less of the bullshit, I think they could go a long way to repairing their uh their 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 reputation with the fans. Uh Mach, can you stick around with us for, for the main event topic or do you have to run? No, I, I got I can give you about twenty more minutes. Great. Wow, mi gente. Wow, mi gente. Well, uh obviously we this is our main event topic of the evening, and uh I, it's no surprise that it's gonna be AEW firing CM Punk for cause uh and everything that 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 surrounded it uh it obviously took the wrestling world by storm over the weekend uh we had even talked about it during our um payback post show 
Um, and we didn't really want to delve too deep into it just then. But now we obviously have the opportunity to talk about it a little bit more. We're finding out a few more details um, as far as it goes with some of the things that have happened in that subsequent time. Uh, Mach, do you kind of want to bring us up to speed here? Bring our bring our viewers up to speed and kind of fill them in on some of the key details surrounding the firing of Carlos Miguel Punk from AEW. Ooh, chick magnet. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love how the CM is just so ambiguous. Yeah. Uh, so from what we've heard is that there is a tape out there that can be released. Do I believe it'll be released? Possibly by somebody that's irate with backstage shenanigans. So we know that Jack Perry wanted time off. And CM Punk wanted him to stick around because they needed him for Saturday night. So clearly he saw value in the kid. And the kid didn't appreciate that. He felt the best thing to do was be a child about it and go work the spot anyway. Well, he's a so child. He he's from a child actor, right? Well, his, I, his, I don't know. his father was an actor. But 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 preceding all of that that you just mentioned, there was that incident involving the glass uh, where Ooh. Jack Perry had suggested to management that he wanted to use real glass for the car spot that he had in ma in mind with his match with Hook. Um Management had told him that they didn't think it was a good idea. Tony Khan had told him that he didn't think it was a good idea. And I What's think in a last ditch now? effort, well, you know, look, he's young. He wants to do something, you know, that's memorable. I mean, okay, whatever. I, I guess, I guess we've all been there once before. And I guess as a young wrestler, it does happen. Um, but they had kind of reached out to CM Punk in a last ditch effort to kind of talk to Jack and to say, Hey, Jack, you don't have to use the real glass. Odds are it could be dangerous. Use the fake glass. Jack then proceeded to kind of have a, a verbal sparring session with Punk. Punk kind of left it as it was. Not really a big deal. He was doing what he was asked as a veteran in the locker room. And then it brings us up to what you were just talking about, um, which is, you know, um, what you had just mentioned about, about uh, Jack Perry wanting to take time off, Punk telling him to stick around. Now, what, what preceded those events? So Jack Perry obviously works the spot in his match with the glass. He knocks on the glass and he tells right to the camera. He looks right at the hard camera and he says, this is real glass, uh, like cry me a river, right? They have the match. They have it. He obviously, he just has a gash on his arm. Nothing too big. I don't even think he needed stitches for it. And as he's doing that, I believe that this is uh, Jack Perry's father rooting for CM Punk at SummerSlam, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. And I think that yeah. I think that's Jack Perry there. Yes, uh, it is. Yeah. As yeah. Well. So they go backstage and then there's an altercation between CM Punk and Jack Perry. Apparently he walked up to Punk. Punk asks him if he's got a problem with him because obviously he was he he was blaming Punk. I don't believe he looked at management. I think he thought maybe this was Punk going to management, please don't make this happen. Don't let this happen. Instead of what you just said, that it was management that made the call. Now, did they make a mistake contacting CM Punk? Probably. But, I mean, that's just being a Monday morning quarterback. We don't know now. So they're both gone from the company for the foreseeable future. They get into a skirmish. See, uh, Samoa Joe and some people break it up. Supposedly, CM Punk lunged at Tony Khan and pushed him into some uh, I don't know, TVs or something backstage. Right. We don't know how much of that is true. Uh, there was also a rumor that Miro and Punk almost got into it, and it was just really just Miro being that consummate pro. Let me go out here. Let me just cool everybody down with a joke. Punk took it like a joke. It was released. It was the same thing as the William Regal thing. It's not a big deal. We were trying to calm things down. Samoa Joe was apparently the big leader backstage. He's the one that got Punk to go out and wrestle. That's his boy. He's the one, yeah, he's the one that got you know everybody calm backstage, and he kind of ran the rest of the night. Like that's right. what it sounds like. That's what all that's what all accounts are saying that Samoa Joe kind of took care of the rest of the night. Now Samoa Joe has a his history with this because of his uh, dating back to his issues uh, with uh, live on air at Impact uh, talking about uh, Scott Hall being a no show and having the issue with Kevin Nash and almost coming to blows backstage. So we knew about that. So we know that Joe knows about these type of things. He knows how to handle these type of things. He's Samoan. Right. But, right. I mean, I think I think he's just really smart, really professional, and, and he really cares about whatever company he works for. Do you think Roman uh -huh. Reigns called him up? I, 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 I don't, don't know. even know if they're related. They're not even from even the know. same tribe. 
They're both Samoan Joes. That's all we know. Um, but yeah. a, a, as as far as it goes uh, with this with this said lungage, this lunging that occurred, this was reported initially by Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez. Now, as we've come to find out, unfortunately, Dave and Brian aren't always the most reliable guys in the world, and they also no, sir, get they a are lot not. of their information from the young bucks and from the elite. Now. Uh, it's also been talked about that this information, this 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 lunging that occurred, um, got back to Punk's camp, and Punk's mm. camp spoke directly. Someone from Punk's camp, very close to him, spoke directly to Conrad Thompson of Eighty Three yes, Weeks Podcast, okay. yes. and had told Conrad that Dave Meltzer is a liar. Yes. Very plainly told him that Dave Meltzer is a liar. Now again, we're all eagerly anticipating Punk's retort because you know punk's not going to keep his fucking mouth shut about this he is going to say something where he says it how he says it who he says it to we don't know punk, we're all we certainly all, waiting come on working the marks and say your piece come on working the marks we'd love to have Absolutely. you here Even, he wouldn't he wouldn't fucking he couldn't point us out from a fucking lineup but <laughs> come on down and fucking come do this show um how did you guys feel when you guys saw what had happened uh because i know it broke on twitter and that actually stole a lot of the headlines of the show. And I think more people were invested with what went on between these two than what was actually having in the uh, what was actually happening in the ring. Well, for me, I got the information based off Bleacher Report. I thought there was a breaking news based on college football. And right. I looked at Bleacher Report and it says CM Punk terminated. And I was like, what? Well, no, no, no. Like, like, I mean, not, not the termination, but I'm talking about uh, news of the fight breaking during the show. Um, because th the news of the fight did come out while it was there. I remember scrolling yeah. on X and it did come up on there, which yeah. I'm, I'm getting used to calling it X now. Uh, it did come on X and I did see it and I was like, wait a minute, what is going Like he got into a fight with Jack Perry. The details were kind of unclear. D, what did you think? And, and Mach, what did you think when, when this news originally broke while you were watching the show? You take this one, mi gente. Yeah. Okay. So I really thought that that was, that was a poor decision and I thought it was strategically released to blacken like uh, anybody's opinion of CM Punk right away because CM Punk had just clearly had the match of the night. TK's right. a and bitch. it was like, we're just going to 100%, we're just going to go out there and knock them. We want everybody to forget what they just saw and talk about what happened backstage, which is what I, which is what I alluded to a couple minutes ago that it seems like they want you to talk about the drama backstage. They don't want you talking about the product on screen. They are definitely believing what Eric Bischoff preaches in his book, which is controversy is cash. And right. it's not working in their favor. I, I thought it was such a stupid way to ruin the rest of the night. You have this, this historic event, and you allow this to release. But personally, my initial thoughts were, so what? Booker T and Batista have gotten into a fight. Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar have gotten into a fight. Kurt Angle right. and Eddie. It doesn't matter. They handle it yeah. in-house. Yeah, we find out about the fights, but it's handled in-house. And it's not right. a big deal. Right. So I, I was shocked that it, it, it apparently was like 45 seconds total time. Punk, uh, like, you know, choked him out as quickly as he did. And it was over. And he went out and he had the fucking match of the night. So what was the point? What do you care about? Do you care about the product he's producing on screen? Or do you care about the fact that some 20-something-year-old kid just, like, Got mocked choked him out. <laughs> in the yeah. beginning of the pay-per-view and then antagonized him when he went to the back? So, like, I, I don't see why CM Punk is catching the blame here. But I know that, Eric, on that podcast that you're alluding to, Eric, uh, Eric Bischoff talks about that there's a there's a um, a woman that works backstage with Tony Khan and she's the one that pushed Tony to terminate uh, CM Punk. Mega, she was, she Me feels, mega, she, mega Parekh, I believe. She feared for she feared for her life. She's she, well, I'm sure she did. She, she's the <laughs> chief financial officer, if I'm not mistaken, of AEW. Oh, she's a numbers bitch. She, yeah, she was. She was. That's one way of, of calling it. Um, well, they lost yeah, a lot yeah, of numbers. Not going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she. She. I do it for you, me gente. Well, thank you. Thank you, D. We're, you can, you're doing it for us. Um, so, yeah, she, she's certainly the numbers person. She, she's a big part of the structure there somewhat uh, of AEW. Um, but we also did find out later on that CM Punk uh, had arrived in London at Heathrow Airport, did not have any car arrangements, did not have anything set up for him. And look, folks, 
Main event stars typically get these things. In WWE, Roman Reigns gets picked up in the private jet. You know what I'm saying? He gets taken straight to the arena. You know, he's not standing around looking for an Uber you, or waiting for the telling, fucking bus. So like, you're telling me, Patrick, are you telling me, Patty Reekin, that when WWE goes over the fucking to uh to fucking uh what's the what's the Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia? Are you telling me that WWE takes their wrestlers to the fucking to the event? They, they don't take them, care of no, them. The people of Saudi Arabia do it. Yeah, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia do that, but, yeah, but the they take the, care of the wrestlers. The point is, is that their big stars are taken mm. care of and are taken to the arena and have ways to get there. CM Punk arrives in Heathrow, was given a number for a driver or a friend of the Young Bucks. He found out later mm. on, uh, called this number. The number bounces back. Now he has to figure out a way to get to Wembley Stadium from Heathrow Airport. Ends up taking the tube, runs into a bunch of fans, was really nice to them. No negative experiences reported whatsoever. Okay. Took pictures with all these fans right gets lost other fans help him he ends up getting to wembley stadium okay so this guy who's your top star who's generated your best numbers ever okay mm -hmm. is not getting picked up at the airport has to figure it out on his own get was given a bogus number it to me it seems like they've been pushing his buttons for a long time um and i have personally thought that since the young bucks re-signed the odds were good that CM Punk was going to leave AEW. And obviously, we saw how that played out. Um, you know, to your point, I just think these guys are incredibly immature. You know, you can be you can be one of the boys and you can in still the be office. You know what I'm saying? It is. It is in the Young name. Bucks. But even with Kenny, even with Kenny, you know, being on, uh, I'm being the elite, you know, uh, drinking the Pepsi and saying it tastes like lighter fluid. Hangman posting up stuff in his stories of discount CM Punk figures for fifty cents. Did you see? All this did you see the elite, the elite uh, YouTube video backstage? They're like, "Oh, we're finally on Collision." You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, I, look again. I understand Children. you guys. You guys are workers, man. But like, save it for the storyline. Triple H was office long before he hung up his boots, and you wouldn't tell. You know what I'm saying? Because he went out there, he was a character, but backstage, he wasn't acting like an asshole. He wasn't being childish. He wasn't being petty. You lost your biggest star, and you're out there doing a victory lap. That's unprofessional, and I think Tony Khan needs to do something about it, and I think the Young Bucks either need to straighten out their behavior or just abandon it, you know, because I think they're they're going to be detrimental to the company in the long run. This is why but, they wouldn't go to the E, bro. They wouldn't be able to, they wouldn't be able to yeah. freaking handle it there. But 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 getting back to the punk situation, we obviously saw on Dynamite. Uh, I believe it was Tony Khan opened up Dynamite, and uh, I think he did address it. Or was it was it at was it at Collision that he collision. addressed it the punk collision. situation? It was the Collision. Okay, so he opened up. He had he had uh, made a video where obviously he didn't blink, and you can tell it was heavily edited. And um, he talked about how he had to fire CM Punk. Uh, he then he then said that Punk um, he used a lot of legal jargon. Where, yeah. where basically people, you know, he mentioned people were afraid for their life. He also went out in front of the United Center crowd and sat on a chair they like like the, pussy. like a cool gym teacher who caught kids drinking a beer behind the bleachers. You know, think I'm shocked he didn't turn the fucking chair around and sit on it backwards, you know. But he, he went out there and he talked for six minutes and people started calling him a pussy and booed him. OK, talking about that. He's he feared for his life. Feared for his life. Yeah, Dave, why okay. did he get him locked up in England? What did what did you what did, what did you think life. of this news when you saw it, Maj? What did you think of Tony Khan's statement uh on firing CM Punk and him fearing for his life? I thought that it was really just like what you said, it was rehearsed. I thought the video was edited a lot. Uh I think he believes, just like a lot of people that don't actually watch movies. They believe that Hannibal Lecter didn't blink in Silence of the Lambs. Uh, I think that that's something that he just believes, and he's like, this is going to come across better by me just looking at you like this and not blinking <laughs> the whole time. But that doesn't. It comes off as uh, impersonal. And I really thought to myself, sure, I agreed with Eric Bischoff and what he said on uh, the All Out um, video that uh, they should have done it before. Like, you, you just have to bite the bullet. Obviously, if CM Punk doesn't show up at Collision and he doesn't show up at All Out, we know something's up. And people are gonna, it's going to be Royal Rumble 2014 all over again. It's going to be Brian Danielson getting guys like Rey Mysterio booed because WWE decides they don't want to push this guy at this time. 
That's what's going to happen. So you don't want that to happen. So he had to get out in front of it. I just thought the way he did it, whoever gave him that advice definitely did not have the company in mind. They just wanted him to go out there and just do it. Right. And right. it felt, and I, and I hate to say this because I don't have confirmation on this. So this is just my opinion, guys. It felt like he possibly contacted someone like Dave Meltzer and said, how would you do this? And, I, you know, because Meltzer has actually said that he has given creative help to Tony Khan before. He said yeah, that himself. Yeah, yeah. I, I, th I think that's more wrestling centric. I think in this case, he spoke to his lawyer. And I think the person he spoke to was looking out for the better interest of the company in the legal sense. The wrestling mm -hmm. sense, that's a whole other fucking ball of wax. But the, the, the language he used was certainly one of a guy who spoke to a lawyer and was told to use that specific terminology, okay? Look, it's no secret Tony Khan grew up a billionaire, right? Rich, rich kid, man. Probably never got into a fight in his life. Was he okay? ever... A, let me ask you a question. Is there any video or, or pictures of Tony Khan at a WWE event ever? There's there's pictures of him, yeah. He's been pictures? backstage yeah. before, giving out yeah. Jaguars jerseys. Dude, he used to go all the time. He used okay. to go all the time. As a matter of fact, I think that's how Cody met him. And Cody introduced him to the Young Bucks and, you know... He kind of got them in that world, and he was already a fan of those guys. But, but you know, uh, Tony Khan seems like a guy who's never probably been in a fight in his life before. Never had the need to because he's fucking loaded, and he probably is always walking around with a, you know, a bodyguard that he's can got guys like form. Brodus Clay next to him and shit. Yeah, man. he's he's got dudes that'll you know they'll, they'll break somebody in half like a toothpick. Um, so it's easy, you know, for for as outrageous as it seems, it's very it's very kind of believable to me that Tony Khan would be afraid in a situation like that. Um, what, what, what do you think the crowd reacted to, 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 to Khan's statement? Like, how do you, how do you think the crowd reaction was? And obviously watching all out was the crowd, um, against the young bucks in any kind of way. Was there like any type of general pro or anti CM punk sentiments until the eight man tag with the bullet club gold, and rockers and heart foundation light until that <laughs> happened uh there were no cm punk uh chants it was only at this point and you can tell and i want to be very clear i can tell based on their demeanor you can tell that the ftr were told do not do any x's do not do anything cm punk and then ftr bald he couldn't help himself because when they went to go do like the double v trigger that the Bucks usually do. I forget what Matt Jackson or Nick Jackson, I can't tell them apart what they did, but he did. He went like this. That was the one time that they like made a reference to CM Punk in the entire match. But every time the Young Bucks came into the match, CM Punk chance, they got booed out of the building. But their athleticism saved them. Whenever they did like an off the top rope specialty move, the crowd popped for it. So it wasn't really. I think the crowd was just so excited because we were watching a historic uh, pay-per-view. It was their best pay-per-view in the entire – since the initial one where, like, Cody wins the NWA title. That was the best AEW pay-per-view that we've ever gotten. This was second to that. Mi gente. And I think the crowd knew that. Mi gente. Is it true yeah. that they confiscated all CM Punk signs? Yes, there are videos out there of uh, security guards going up to people, folding their signs Making in half. Making them flip their T-shirts inside out. Yes. There is video out there. It was all over X. You can see you can see the videos. People were like, uh, so like, let's say you or I were sitting next to each other and Pat was sitting two rows above us. Yeah. That person two rows above. So Pat, he was recording it and posting it. Oh, right. Like, wow, look at what they're doing to CM yeah. Punk fans. Yeah. yeah so yeah, like that, that, that happened. That did happen. On Collision, you could tell that they were angry. Mm -hmm. On All Out, I think they were just happy with what they got. MJF is so over. That stupid kangaroo kick is really over with the crowd, so it got everybody pumped up. And we kept seeing good match after good match after good match. It was just yeah. like okay, like the only bad matches we got were the women's match with, with uh, the women's match with Chris Stat uh, Statlander and Ruby, and um, that shit show of a spot fest, the eight way. Every other match was, you know, good to better than good. Gotcha. Okay. I, I was okay. really surprised. What did, what what did you think of the news of CM Punk's uh, firing? How did you feel about it? Uh, did you feel any type of way at all? What did, what what did you think of it? Because for me personally, when I heard the news, I was like, "Good for him, good for him, man." 
because it seems like, and again, this is just my take on things based on what I've seen. Don't quote me on this and say that I said that this was fact because I, it's not. We never know. We don't know what the situation is. There's their side, punk side, and the fucking truth in the middle. Um, but I think that for ever since they got into that fight and them leaking stuff to the dirt sheets and them leaking stuff to Meltzer and Meltzer running with it and Alvarez running with it and then putting out a lot of false stuff about CM Punk, you kind of had a feeling that something was going to happen. We and saw what happened. poor Larry. Poor he, Larry. He, you know, his dog getting injured and all that, the big fight and all that stuff. We saw that stuff that happened. But I think that once the Bucks re-signed, I think they really made it a point to make sure that they get rid of Punk. And I think Punk really knew that. Obviously, we saw rumors came out that uh, at some point throughout the year, uh, I think early on in the in the end of 2022, going into 2023, Punk was thinking about quitting and uh, going to WWE and being in the Royal Rumble uh, and setting up a match for WrestleMania with a guy that he eliminates there, and that guy was supposed to be Kevin Owens. Now, how much of that is true, we don't know. Again, these, this is all speculation. There's a lot of stories that came out about Punk and Regal having a problem and all this stuff. Obviously, we're going to start seeing a lot of negative stories about Punk coming up because people want to paint their narrative. I think the fans have already made up their mind, Fred. I think there's a sense of relief when I saw that he was gone because now he no longer has to deal with any of that bullshit anymore. And I think for as much as he wanted his creative independence, for as much as he wanted his wrestling independence, I think he misses the structure of WWE. And yeah. I, I think that I think that he's going to end up going back to WWE uh, sometime soon. Look at that beautiful cat. Uh, I, I think uh, we, we are cat men on this show, by the way. Uh, yeah, I think... <laughs> I think that I think that he's gonna end up going back to WWE, and I think he's gonna make a fuck ton of money. What about and Impact? I, what about Impact, man? They're putting out the dimes. I, I think I think you just put a picture in the background. I think that's what you did. Um, if, but, if it happens, it's gonna be very much like Steve Austin and ECW. It's gonna be a very quick run. It'll be uh, show to show pay base. But um, I'll give you my last thoughts real quick, uh, sure. then I, and then I have to get off here for you guys. Uh, my initial thoughts, and I genuinely mean this. My initial thoughts was, fuck, the women are going to lose night one of WrestleMania main event one more time. Damn. That was my initial thought. All I right. thought to myself, I thought we were getting Becky versus Rhea as the main event at night one. And now we're possibly getting CM Punk main eventing night one of WrestleMania. Because I don't think he cares what night he main events. He just wants the main event. And I think that'll be the sticking point. And they're like, sure, we can give you night one. So that's kind of what I'm seeing. That that was my initial thought. <laughs> this you know? guy was quick to change the background. That's great. Yeah, he's very, very good at that. Very good at that. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for having me on. I look forward to it. And if you need me to fill it in again next week, uh, Umberto, I'm about to take your spot, buddy. So you need to jump back on this Ooh. show. Suave Ooh. mi gente. <laughs> I think what I'll have to do is as quickly as D just did that uh, – CM Punk on Raw. I think I'll have to like I'll, I'll have to put my face over Umberto's body for the wow. for the intro of the show. So wow. you need to hurry up and get on here, Bobby, because look, look, I got I got plenty of hair. So oh, you're cold. Oh, oh, Jesus. oh, low blow, damn, low bro. Blow. It's, it's, there's heat here, bro. Somebody's <laughs> shooting an angle. All right, you guys shoot it on your own time. All right, man. <laughs> no, that, it's all love. It's all love. It's all love. I, I love I love Cuban sandwiches. All right, guys. Thank you well, so much. Thank you so much, Macho Rodriguez from the Must Love Wrestling Podcast. We look forward to having you on. Love you, brother, and come back love on anytime, too, man. man. Take care, man. Yes, sir. Peace out. See ya. Well, D, obviously, you know, it's back to the two of us here. I love Cuban sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I, he, man, he's shooting an angle here. I don't know, man. I, I got to step away, man. That, that's, oh, that uh, was a good my, one. My hands are clean of this one, brother, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I think to his point, you know, it's like this. This is a this is a good thing, I think, for CM Punk. I think uh, wherever he lands. He's obviously going to get a ton of super, attention. I, I, when, 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 it's, when it's a guest on the show, I just like being the clown, and I like them to shine. But, I mean, to answer the question, bro, I was fucking elated. Really? I elated when I heard this shit. I, I started to cry, bro. I was like, mm -hmm. it was like head going back to corn. Yeah. I was going back to the E. Well, you know what? Actually, you you have been a, a vocal advocate uh, for CM Punk going back to the E. You had initially wanted him to go back to the E. I think you were happy to see him back in the wrestling world again. But, yeah. obviously... You were really only, uh him and Sting were the only reason back. why him and Sting were the only reason why I watched AEW. And now Sting ain't really calling me there. And Punk was the only thing holding me there. And now I'm like, you know, Punk's gone. I'm out. Mm -hmm. I'm not He's gonna lie, I, I marked out for Seek and Destroy though. That shit was dope. When he came out to fucking Seek and Destroy. Oh yeah. I'm, 
I marked out for that. That was pretty fucking cool. But um, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I, look, I think at the end of the day, he wants that structure. Like I said before, he he needs that structure. Yeah. And I think he's going to thrive. And oddly enough, I think he's a guy that needs to be pissed off about something to do good. It's weird. There's just some people out there that I think need to be mad about something in order for them to to, to go out there and knock it out of the park. You know, and, he needs that and, chip on his shoulder. And I love how everybody's everybody's saying they're like, oh, he's not gonna go back. He's not gonna go back. Oh, he's too he's too much trouble. Always oh, oh, look at all the stuff back. See, bro, it wasn't his fault that these dudes came bum rushing in his fucking locker room and attacked him and his fucking dog and fucking Mr. Steele. Mm -hmm. That was them. You didn't need to go in the back of the locker room. Number yeah. two, Jack Perry should have kept his fucking mouth shut and been a professional and not said, this is real glass on the camera, and then fucking go up and confront the guy backstage. Bro, yeah. if you were confronted and pushed against the wall, you were going to fight. And CM Punk's from Chicago, bro, and he's like a fucking pit bull. You know? Well, yeah. I mean, of course, dude. You know, you're talking about a kid who his father was an actor. He grew up in Beverly Hills, 90210. Yeah. Of course. And, um... You know, this is a punk rock kid from fucking Chicago who, you know, probably got into fights every day just because of the way he fucking looked in the music he liked. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, it, it's pretty easy to say that punk is probably going to whoop his ass. And man. Um, look, man, I, I, I think that the Young Bucks created a lot of the problems there. I think if they would have kept their fucking mouth shut. Aren't they friends with this kid? Isn't he down with them? Yeah, they're all California guys. They're all California guys. But I, but I, But I think that, you know... I think that instead of them talking about their shit and getting it out in the open, no. I think, you know, he reached a point where it was just too much for him. You know, whether it was Hangman going into business for himself, which we forgot to mention as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the Young Bucks, you know, doing what they did, spreading their bullshit stories to Dave Meltzer, Dave Meltzer running with it, you know, creating this, this unnecessary cloud of negativity around CM Punk. I could see how that would piss somebody off, man. I could see how that would fucking piss somebody if, if off. If Vince Vince wants to bury fucking AEW for a third time, sign Punk. Bury him for a third time. I I, I look, man. I I I think that there's younger talent that he could do that with in the long and run. And I bet you Vince will talk you to know? him now. Vince will be like, I'll talk to you now. He, who I don't, I, I, I don't think Vince has fooled? anything to do with it. I don't I'm think saying, Vince has anything. Who knows if Vince even flew him out to fucking to, to Connecticut and like, hey, pal, you're not under the contract no more. There's a fucking one way. There's a fucking first class ticket waiting for you. Don't not even. Talk. He would send the private plane for him. But Ooh, I, I, I think that I think that, you know, it's money, dude. There's money to be made. You know, um, this is, again, one of these, you know, scenarios, these what if scenarios. That's one of the few ones. Hey, I think on. really I the only one left. You also, know, also too, bro. I heard this from uh, I heard this on um on Wrestling Soup podcast that they were like, well, when CM Punk called fucking uh, this guy a fucking stooge, well, William Regal, he is a stooge. You don't think he yeah. went over there and was fucking telling Triple H everything that was going on? Come on. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he is. But look, man, sometimes these conversations happen backstage, dude. People just get in. Look, I've seen plenty of com conversations in the short amount of time that I was in the business that i thought were going to escalate into bigger problems and they and didn't, you weren't bro. calling Meltzer up going hey man i got this I, I i didn't care it was just two guys having a fucking conversation that's none of my never mind i don't gotta fucking yeah. worry about that but it's again it's interesting that this is coming out now and then regal comes out and says that it's bullshit regal was just like it was nothing we had a come conversation on, look at no that. big deal no big deal look we saw that cm punk went backstage to monday night raw right you yep. remember that we covered oh, that yeah. that's that's in our episode archive in case you want to hear what we said back then um I think, and even Fernando had mentioned, he's going there to take the temperature. He's going mm -hmm. there to see what's going on. He's seeing what's his perception there. And he's kind of seeing, hey, this is this is what I can do. This is what I can't do. I don't think money's going to be a fucking problem. I think he's made enough money in AEW. Yeah. I think he just wants to work somewhere with structure. And plus, he'll make it up in, in, in merchandise sales. Okay? Oh, definitely. But for everybody out there that's acting like, nah, I don't want to see CM Punk in, in WWE. I don't want to see CM Punk doing can't this. I want to go. Bullshit. Okay. Bullshit. Because when that fucking music hits, okay, and he comes out, which one? Whoever's, who, well, well, cult which of personality. <laughs> but if cult of personality hits, he comes out, and, you know, whoever's standing in the middle of that fucking ring sees him, bro, it's going to be a huge moment in wrestling, dude. People are going to freak the fuck out. And they're all going to rush to tune in whatever show he's going to be on that week. Oh, definitely. Trust me. Could imagine Trust the ratings. Me. Could imagine That's the that, ratings. Yeah, the ratings are going to be through the roof, bro. Not only that, the merchandise sales. 
everything, bro. Yo, don't you, th this is the other thing too that I think I, people, I bet you people don't bring don't ice cream like. bars too back just for. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This this is the one thing that I think people don't take into consideration enough, and it's the fact that WWE is a professional fucking company. Okay. Yeah. You might have grievances with somebody, and there's been plenty of documented grievances in that company throughout the years between talent. You can have a problem with somebody, but you still got to go out there and you got to go do your fucking job because one guy, one person is in charge, right? Yeah. We know the people that are in charge in WWE, Nick Khan, Triple H. If they say you got to go out there and you got to work with this guy, you're going to bury your bullshit. Seth Rollins and Matt Riddle, they had a fucking problem for a long time. They put it aside. They had a great match. Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels. I mean, the list goes on and on with all these guys that had legitimate heat in real life that yeah. went out there and worked well together, bro. So none of this bullshit, none of this petty nonsense is going to be tolerated. And if it does happen, it's going to happen on TV and they're going to use it to generate interest and it's going to be a fucking angle. That's what That's they're going to do. Because everybody there is a professional. How much, so, money did, how much money did Matt Hardy and make, bro? Come on. Yeah, dude. Come on, man. I mean, it, this, is, this is ridiculous, dude. It's a no-brainer. If he goes to WWE, it's going to be hot. His promos alone are going to be amazing. Imagine the first promo between him and Cody, dude. Imagine what that's going to be like. Yeah. Imagine imagine all the little Easter eggs in that. You know what I'm saying? There's so many possibties. Any one of those guys. Imagine Roman Reigns with. about to do an interview backstage and Punk just walks by and they both just look at each other. And yeah. Walk yeah. Come on. Punk and Roman. Uh, Punk and Rollins. Punk and Sammy or Kevin. Punk fucking Chad Gable. Punk yeah. Gunter. I mean, like, dude, there's so many matches that you could have with this guy. Punk LA Knight. I mean, like, all, all the all these matches, man. All these all these possibilities. And look, again, as far as it goes with his physical, you know, condition, I mean, whether he can work or not as, as well as he used to in the past. I mean, hey, man, it happens. People get older, you know, shit, shit happens. But yep. they have so much oversight there and their production ability is, is, is like their, their production is second to none. But really, the oversight and 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 these guys producing the kind of matches that they do, they're going to make sure that he's doing things that he can do, do well. It's not going to look bad. It's not going to look shitty. They're going to put him in there with guys that are going to help him. They're going to do their part, Punk, too, Punk athletically. The Punk in the Miz. Punk in the Miz. That's another match you could do. I mean, but, bro, but, like, Punk John Cena. Punk John <laughs> Cena. Why fucking not? Why part not, two. bro? Why not, bro? Think about all that stuff that they could do. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, again, man, it's, it's a no-brainer. They have the ability to help him in the ring. Is he any worse than fucking Edge was? And exactly. Edge is 49, and people are perfectly fine with him coming back, you know? So it's a no-brainer, dude. I say bring him back. I can't wait. I hope it does fucking happen. And I hope that... I hope that... Because, you know, Triple H is, is a smart guy, dude. He's going to do it for fucking business. And if they sign Punk, it's going to be a part-time deal. It's going to be like, you know... And look at Roman. Roman said he's like, if he's, it's for, if it's good for business, I'll do it. Even if Roman even said it himself. Roman Roman made it very fucking evident he doesn't like him. Rollins yeah. made comments to Nick Hausman, Chicago's own Nick Hausman, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 told him the same thing that he doesn't like Phil. Called him a cancer. Great, he spoke it well in character. Yeah. At the end of the day, these people are businessmen. They're going to do business. We're not talking about the minor leagues here. So. Uh, it's certainly going to be really exciting to see what happens between now and then with uh, CM Punk, as well as All Elite Wrestling, um, and as well as WWE. I mean, it, just a great weekend for 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 wrestling shows for wrestling fans, and you know we'll see what happens in, in the next couple of weeks. But uh, I'll, one last thing we're, we're, we'll talk about here. But D, if you had to guess when CM Punk would make his debut in WWE, if that were to happen. When would you think he would make his? Debut? I mean, I mean, it's it's very obvious. Everybody wants him to come out to Survivor Series because it's in Chicago, right? But I would be more surprised if it was Royal Rumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, 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 I it'd think make more it would, sense. It would make more sense. More importantly, I think maybe it'll give him a little bit more time to get a little bit sharper. And, he, you and know? he'd be he'd be able to get he'd be able to like you know hook up a fucking match for WrestleMania. Who yeah. throws him out? You know, yeah. who he throws out. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, whoever that might be would be Maybe interesting. Maybe he might be in the building and fucking, you might pan past cameras like, see him yeah. punks in Survivor Series? He's in Chicago. Of course he's in Chicago. He lives there. Why would well, he you, you, you got to think, right? You got to think that if he did come back for a, for a match, uh, I think a main event perhaps against Seth Rollins, if he somehow manages to hold on to the title till then for the World Heavyweight Championship, 
that yeah. that would that would that would be a pretty darn not, good not, match. Not, did you see? Uh, did you see? Uh, after the cameras were off, Nakamura beat the shit out of him when he was going up the ramp. They seem like they're kind of teasing Seth losing the title soon. Uh, they're really going heavy on selling the back. Yeah. Uh, you know he does have some injuries though. Uh, that that is a shoot. Uh, so what happens there? We don't know, but he I mean, can make it to mania. He's a big boy. He can make it to mania. Absolutely. And look, man, any match you put CM Punk in, uh, would be great, but, uh, I would definitely say perhaps maybe somebody a little bit more athletic, a little bit limber, more limber than he is right now. No. Um, punk psychology is second to none. The guy can fucking tell a story in that ring. Punk does need a lot a of little, he doesn't need a belt, bro. He's, he's good. He's good, bro. He's good. He can make it happen. Him being there alone, the buzz that it will create. Now do you th do you think he'll bring the, you think he'll bring the AEW title with him? <laughs> well, that's <laughs> that, 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 in the garbage can. That's that's the million dollar question. I mean, um, you know, uh, <sighs> wow, that I mean, you, you know? want to talk about like you want to oh, you, you say you want to say who's number one on TV? Drop that belt in the garbage can. Can you imagine? I mean, can you imagine like like the 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 nuclear outrage online Ooh. if something like that were to happen? It would be. It would be insane, but again, I uh, do I do I think it will happen? Probably not, but you no. can't rule it out because at the end of the day, the guy who's in charge of WWE, the guy's in charge of creative right now. He's a guy that drove a tank to to WCW to go see his <laughs> friends. He's a he's a soldier of the Monday Night Wars, man. He's a he's a Monday Night War veteran, oh, and yeah. um, I think that he takes certain things personally and, and I, I think, think he I also know. understands how great it is for fans and i think too. the real tony khan would fucking appreciate that sure i think the the non aw owner tony khan would would, would appreciate it as a as a wrestling fan um but that's whether that happens asterisk next to his name he's real tony khan that that certainly would be something if it did happen and if you are going to do it i mean you know that he's a lightning rod for controversy. CM Punk. Oh, I, come on. You want the world to hate him more? Do that. That's certainly the perfect guy to do that. Um, but yeah, if I had to guess, I, I I would say maybe the Royal Rumble. We don't know. You know, he doesn't have a non compete clause. He was released outright. He was fired yeah. outright for cause. So he pretty much can do whatever the hell he wants. Um, if I were him, I mean, you know, you're in shape even, already. Even Why not? Go, even if he doesn't wrestle in Chicago, on he doesn't have to wrestle. He'll be backstage. He'll yeah. probably walk up there and be like, I, I can come in now. He doesn't he doesn't have to wrestle. He doesn't have to do anything. All he has to do is music. That's it. Music, come out, maybe beat somebody up, hit a GTS. The place would explode. The same people that booed yeah. or were divided, they would fucking cheer him. Any any anywhere would cheer him. All the big mark territories would cheer him. It's money, D. We hope it happens. Here on Work in the Marks, we'd like to see yeah. CM Punk back in the WWE. I think it would be great for wrestling. It would be great for the fans. I think Umberto I would like it too. I think he would too. I think Mach would like it, obviously, <laughs> and uh, we know you folks will like it as well. Man, no, 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 top guy Timothy Brown tonight, huh? No, I don't know what happened, man. I don't know. Oh man, man. shout out, shout out to Work in the Marks top guy, top Timothy guy Brown, TV. and and our other top guy uh, Fernando Uribe, who's not with us tonight, aka uh, Umberto, aka Umberto Del Rio, I guess. Uh, we, he'll be joining us uh, hopefully next week. Uh, we we love having his insight on the business as well. But folks, it's been great, great show talking. Big thanks to Macho. Uh, check out his podcast, Must Love Wrestling, available here on Fancast. They, they just got Media. an IG page now. They just he just popped up an IG page. Yeah, moving on up, team. moving on up. Uh, and check out D's own podcast from the Dungeon Podcast, which I used to co-host with him. Little oh, yeah. if you want to throw me a couple bucks, you know? go to patreoncom slash the Dungeon Podcast. Yeah. Throw me a buck. You could watch my episode, uh, and I think there was some drummers episode on there, but I, I forgot his oh. name. Um, but yeah, I, I believe on the highest rated episode, you know. I think so. you are on the Mister Fields episode. Yeah. So, hey, man, you know, easy it's work, man. Feel. Obviously, I bring the ratings wherever I go, man. Uh, the demo, the demos through the roof. So, <laughs> come on now. Um, but folks, thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, send us a message. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear what you're thinking. Uh, we'd love to, you know, talk about it here on Working the Marks as well. And we certainly look forward to bringing you more great wrestling content in the future. Uh, he is D Rotten from the Dungeon. He's straight from the Dungeon. That's it. Not not Stu Hart's Dungeon, but he's from the Dungeon Podcast. And I am Patty Reekin, the bread of the table, the man with the plan, the star of the show. And every week on here, on oh, well, every I uh, see I botched it already. Every week here 
on YouTube or however the fuck you watch this stuff, we are working the marks. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. Peace. Famcast Media.